Hi. Hi. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. I'm gonna steal your jacket. <laughs> First of all, I love this book. I love, love, love this book. Oh, I can't cry. Um, the illustrations for this book are beautiful. And when I was looking through it, it made, they're very emotive, and it actually made me think of um, looking at a memory. Hmm. I think is the best way to look at it, because like in the book, there's no, I like in the illustration that there's no like lines. Like usually when you see like a cartoon or an illustration, it's like, oh, this is a drawing. Right. And I think the idea that it gave me was like, I was looking back. And so when you're doing a book like this, like what comes first, the drawings or the text? For me, it happens at the same time, mm -hmm. but drawing is always where I get my ideas. But what you're picking up on is something that I absolutely put into the book. I wanted it to feel soft, I wanted it to feel really internal. So I hope that that comes through for everybody. That's exactly what I thought, because we were like, well, it's beautiful. And I was like, no, this looks like, because it's like the, like this is the first book that you've written and illustrated. And was it scary to do both of those? Yeah, absolutely. So I've written nonfiction before, and mm. so I can feel really excited and proud to share the stories of other people, especially incredible people from history, but to share something about my life that came from, you know, something really internal, and to put that all on the page is, is terrifying and scary to write things and share them with people, but that's the process of making art. No, I'm a stand-up comic, so it's yeah. like, oh, I hope these words I say, uh, people <laughs> like them. <laughs> yep. Cause it's like as a comic, the first time you go on stage with a joke, it's like for information. Like I need to know mm -hmm. if this is funny or not. And then every time you do the joke, it's for confirmation. So like I know the joke is funny, I just need you to catch up to where I am. Mm -hmm. But the <laughs> so like I know what I'm doing. But the first look for a couple times you're like, hey man, I don't know if I said these words right. Um, I don't know if they're gonna like the words in this order. And then you gotta figure out and sometimes it's like this just don't work. Yeah. Doing events for kids is the, sort of like the same thing. I feel like I'm doing stand-up, waiting for their jokes, waiting for them to, to connect with the story. And if they don't like it, then I haven't done my job correctly. Oh yeah, I used to do kids' birthday parties. I've had a lot of jobs. Um, <laughs> every time I'm in the office, they're like, you used to work where? I'm like, hey man, don't worry about that. You're asking too many questions. <laughs> um, but making stuff for kids is hard because you have to keep their attention and you have to keep their focus. So. Obviously the title big connotes like a physical size, but in the book, big means that and like a lot more. So can you talk about what the bigness means here? Yeah, I was thinking a lot about how we as adults use words with children when kids are young. We use big as a word of affirmation. We say, you're such a big girl. You're a big girl now, and that's a good thing. But typically with girls and all children, big changes meaning, and I wanted to trace how that word can go from a word of affirmation into something different for a child's life. Oh yeah, because I remember being a big girl and being a big girl. Yeah. <laughs> When that day happens, I think you're like, I don't know, 11? Mm. And then it's like, oh, you're such a big girl. Like, oh, she's a big, a big girl. Right, and you remember that. Yeah, because like that why it was so interesting to me is because like this is semi-autobiographical, right? So the main character gets stuck in like a baby swing. And y'all have seen the baby swing at a swing set and, you know, thought like, I shouldn't get in this thing. <laughs> But you did try, like we all tried. <laughs> so is this something that actually happened to you, like getting stuck in that swing? Yes, uh, so the girl in the book is not me. She doesn't have a name, but uh, the experience of getting stuck in the swing was real and it happened to me. And I remember it. I remember the fear and the anxiety and the shame that I felt as a young child. And um, I wanted to kind of make a book that acknowledge that those feelings are big and sometimes can trap us in and box us in and express how those feelings can be really overwhelming for a young person. So why doesn't she have a name? Because I was reading the book, because this is a page turner even at my big age. Um, <laughs> why doesn't she have a name? Well, I didn't want her story to be mine. I mm. wanted many people to be able to look at the girl in this book and maybe connect with her, feel empathy for her, and thusly feel compassion for her experience. But when I started writing it, I really wanted it to be a wordless book. Right now, there's only a handful of book words in the book. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it would have been great to just tell everything through the pictures. Yeah, because I was, like, looking at it, and I think because it 
looks like a memory and it's a little girl that looks like me and because she didn't have a name I was like oh I remember being on the swing set and being so afraid to try to get in it and try to get in that baby swing now mind you we've all seen the baby swing and if you're not a baby you really have no business trying to get <laughs> in this baby but I would see other girls get into it and I'm just like oh where's the rest yep. of her legs um <laughs> Yeah, it's Why are her legs, she's nine. Why are her legs only as big as a toddler? Like, we shouldn't be upset that I'm so big. Why is she so small? Like, what? <laughs> somebody call somebody, because I feel like she needs help at home. But that was my way of, like, processing the fact that this nine-year-old girl could fit in a baby swing, and I couldn't. Because um, I love the use of the color pink in the book. Is that where you add in, like, the softness, or was it because it was a classic, like, girl color and she's a dancer like what was the choice to use yeah. that color there were a couple of different reasons um, so the main character is a dancer she loves ballet typically when I work on a book I usually assign a color to a character mm. and try to use that to build a palette and specifically in this book we're in her world so everything is that color pink I wanted it to be a symbol for sweetness and innocence but also in color psychology pink is associated with gentle love and care and that's everything that I want for this girl. So you were trying to give her the moment, because I think a lot of times as like girls, especially black girls, we're given womanhood much older than we should be. Right. And because I think for me, I got mo womanhood much older than I should be because I was, well, let's just say when I was nine years old, I had like C's, right? So the first time I hit, a man hit on me, I was nine. But I had a butt, I had big boobs, and I was wearing a suit. So, because I couldn't wear little girl clothes because they didn't make little girl clothes in women's sizes. Right. So I was looking at size nine shoes in a suit and this man comes in and is like, what's your name? And I had to turn around and go, I'm nine. And he was like, no! <laughs> what do you mean? And my mother went, what the hell? And he ran out of a Miami Payless. And so, <laughs> without going at first, why does she look like this? Mm -hmm. And then he ran outside, but it was like, when you're built like a tiny, because I was also like four, like I was five feet tall. So when you look like a tiny woman or you're the size of a whole woman, but you're nine, everyone's like, well, you should have all these responsibilities. And it's like, but I got dolls yeah. for Christmas. So I'm not yeah. a double digit age, but everyone's like, you get all this responsibility. And I think it's like, that's why I like looking at this. Cause I was like, oh, this is the, This is the experience that girls should have. Because we should get to be little. So I think I'm going to ask you the next question. Um, well, <laughs> thank you. I, I do want to touch on that. Hi. I want to talk about it. I want to talk about that because one of the main reasons I wanted to write this story was to touch on the subject of adultification bias, the adultification of black girls. Right. I, early in my career, I'd read this study that came from the Georgetown Law Center on Poverty and Inequality called Girlhood Interrupted that talked about the specific bias that many adults have on black girls. It found that adults viewed black girls as young as the age of five as less innocent and more adult than their white counterparts. Right. And this results in, in young girls receiving less care and less nurturing. Mm -hmm. And so many different things factor into it, including a child's height, age, skin color, mm -hmm. body size, and weight. And I just wanted to reclaim space for children to grow, for their bodies to look different, to offer them the innocence and gentleness and care that they deserve for as long as they need it. Yeah, because then you find out like black girls get, um, out of all like girls in school, they get suspended as a higher rate. Exactly. As if like they're doing more wrong, but like black children and brown children get suspended at a higher rate. Right. Cause it's like, I don't, I mean, I don't know if we're throwing hands better than white girls, but <laughs> it's, it's very interesting. Cause it's like, you use the words like creative and compassionate and kind to describe these, you know, to describe her character. And it's like, I think a lot of times like a young girl, if you're allowed to even be little, 
you know, you get like a lot of cute or pretty. Like, do you think it affects girls to hear different words like compassionate and kind? Like, giving words that are more described, like descriptors of person, uh, just adjectives of personality as opposed to like appearance. Yeah, I think. I just want for all kids to be able to define who they are. Right. Adults will make mistakes. They will say things, words that, you know, we don't know what's going to stick with kids, but mm -hmm. I wanted to clarify for this girl and for any kid that reads this book that you get to choose what's important mm -hmm. and real for you. And you don't have to hold on to anything that doesn't define you. You get to decide that for yourself. There's one page in here, and I want to know, can I show the page in the book that she goes through, and I'm not going to spoil it for people because mm -hmm. you have to see her grow and grow in the, in the changes that she goes to, but there's one page Almost there. that I, and I think you know exactly the page I'm talking about, where me and our makeup artist Enid was literally crying in the makeup room. And I don't know if you know how uh, crying in the makeup room works, but it's basically you just tilt your head back and you catch the tears. <laughs> Because Enid is an amazing makeup artist, but it's just like, there's salt on my face now! So, but the thing that we were just like, that made her stop and made me stop, where the little girl goes to the adults. These are yours. These are yours, they hurt me. And so she's holding words. And she said, these are yours, they hurt me. And so, I think, like, that's when I was looking at this, I was like, this is a book for children? Because <laughs> there are a lot of people that make a lot of money, my therapist included, who make a lot of money trying to show adults how to love and care for themselves. And I'm just, is there like a grown up version of this book? Can we call it like still big? Like can we? <laughs> And then there's just a bad bitch at the bottom. Like, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Just I still big, bad bitch at the bottom. She might be modeled on me, make a style, and I know who you want to choose. But, you know, just still big. I think that that could be some grown ups might also need help with this. So. Thank you uh, for that. Of I think course. picture books are for everyone. So I'm happy that anyone can read that book and find something for themselves in it. I think this can be good. If you have anybody who's working on their self esteem, um, this, the, I think this is something that everyone can resonate with, because there's a lot of times where just words have just, because they always teach us, like, sticks and stones can break your bones, but words, I'm like, I can get over a bruise. But like I learned with my ex, <laughs> emotional scars never heal. <laughs> Don't learn from me. <laughs> Don't listen to me. I'm not helpful a lot of the time. But, <laughs> but I think that is the main thing we have, we have to stop telling that lie. Mm. Because I think we tell that to children for them to be able to make this defense mechanism. Because, yeah. like, you don't remember... Like, if you remember every time you fell off a bike, you wouldn't get back on a bike. But you remember... Like, you don't always remember what someone said, but you remember how they made you feel. For sure. And so, because of the words can make you feel a certain way, even if you forget what they said, your body still remembers. Yeah. And that's why I think I wanted to show the scene in the book where the the words are stuck to the girl. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen immediately. It happens, you know, over time. At, over time. Um, and again, like, you just don't know what is going to stick with kids. You can't guarantee that things won't stick to you. But, mm -hmm. you know, over time, you can separate out what's good for you and what isn't. I think the page after the page you pointed out is the one that always gets me, which is what? she hands back the words and says, these are yours, they hurt me. Mm -hmm. And on the next page, some of the people say, well, not everyone understood or even listened. And some of the people say, it's not that serious. It's just a joke. You're too ah. sensitive. That's the thing that still, still gets me, because I am still that girl who was told that I'm too sensitive for listening to the words that people said to me, for letting them them resonate and for feeling them. Oh yeah. But I... that's so real and kids kids need often the space and the time to to manage those things. Well you're absolutely right. I want to thank you for coming.